Luke is very empathic, generous. He have a bunch of money, so he spoils me. Introduction time for everyone that's unfamiliar with this couple. Luke is a 30-year-old passport bro from Los Angeles, and Madeline is a 19-year-old former escort from Medellin, Colombia. As y'all saw from the introduction of this video, Madeline assumes that everything's taken care of in terms of the finances, because Luke presented himself as a man with a lot of money that was her Prince Charming that was gonna put her on scholarship. He's paying for this apartment in Medellin so that they can live there together, or so she thought. How about your financial situation? I'll be honest with you, man, it's super bad. Turns out that Luke actually made a lot of poor investments. That's what he communicated to the audience. I'm gonna roll the clip in a second, but what he claims is that he lost $500,000 by investing in his own sunglass brand, his own travel agency. Every single business that he named off is a business that would result in getting more traction from going on the show 90 Day Fiance, or in their case, Love in Paradise. Over the past year and a half, I've invested over $500,000 into startup businesses. I have invested in a jewelry company. I've developed a lifestyle brand, a travel agency, and I'm trying to get a clothing line off the ground as well. My problem with this guy is that he falls in the category of phony baloney. The amount of $500,000 is a lot of money, and he's so blasé, casual about it. He has all this fake jewelry he's trying to sell everybody. It seems like he's a charlatan to me, but I would love to know what you think in the comments about this. I, 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 I don't have any money. Um, as I'm leaving this job, I'm pulling my 401k. All of it. You liquidated all it all. Liquidated it. Not to mention when it comes to loot, for someone that claims to be so in love with this woman in Colombia, he sure spent a lot of the first episode talking about himself. I'm a mining engineer by trade, but my real passion is business. And in business, I know first impressions mean everything. I want to be noticed. I'm unique and I want to be remembered as such. Notice me, senpai, notice me. My uniqueness is so unique, I just wanna share it with the entire world. According to Google, the average escort makes around $20,000 yearly in Medellin, Colombia. This woman assumed that Prince Charming came along, El Gringo Bonito put her on scholarship, and she doesn't have to go back to that life anymore. And we've seen that multiple times on the show where sex tourists will throw money to attract the woman, and then once they feel like, okay, this woman is relying on me to a certain point, they all of a sudden wanna change up the relationship dynamic and expect that person to go out of their way or make personal sacrifices to make it work. Another thing Madeline and I have to talk about is that I can't officially move until I get my finances in order. And honestly, I don't know how long that's going to take. And for guys like that, it's not gonna happen. And even if it does happen, the woman's gonna be filled with resentment because they feel like they're a trophy and they don't need to do that, especially when there's so many other guys that would do the same thing that you were doing before you all of a sudden changed up. I have given her my heart on a silver platter and I hope that she doesn't break it. Are there women that will make personal sacrifices to save the relationship? Absolutely, but when your foundation is material possessions, it's doubtful that that's gonna be the case, right? That's the problem with these guys, is that they test the f out of these girls on camera, they pretend to be the victim, and it's actually really embarrassing, not only for our country, but it's cowardly for them to do this, especially to a 19-year-old girl. This guy's communicating a completely different message to her than he's communicating to his friends. The only thing that was keeping me afloat was my salary. Now, I don't have any savings. Plus, I have a mountain of debt. And then when he arrives in Medellin, Colombia, he's going to tell her, babe, I lost all the money. Are you still a ride or die? And then it's going to make her look like an asshole, which is kind of cruel to do to someone, especially when they come from survival. And obviously, this guy doesn't. And let's talk about the age difference. 19 versus 30. That's a lot of life that this man has lived that this woman hasn't lived. I've been a mining engineer for seven years now, and I make a lot of money doing it. But about a month ago, I was let go because I was taking too much time off work visiting my fiance, Madeleine, in Colombia. Some of you are probably asking yourselves, what in the frick is mining engineering? Well, it's associated with many other disciplines such as mineral processing, exploration, excavation, geotechnical engineering, and surveying. A mining engineer may manage any phase of the mining operations from exploration and discovery of the mineral resources through feasible study, mine design, development of plans, production, and operations to mine closure. Are we doing the same high pressure? Yeah, let's do 
uh, stand up. Let's try six minutes today. Okay, perfect. I just want to look pretty for my girl. W's in the shot. The way that Luke moves is very calculated and he expects us to believe that he's done everything right his whole life. He built up this net worth of over $500,000 and within only the span of a year and a half, he blew all the money. Since meeting Madeleine, I have spent almost $100,000 sending money to her. I highly doubt that you had $500,000 in the first place given the way you talk, the way you walk, the way you dress. I feel like Kendrick, I'm the biggest hater. I hate the way that you walk, I hate the way that you talk. Um, but you guys picking up what I'm putting down. He's another sex tourist that went over there to Columbia and probably asked this girl, hey, do you wanna go on the show? Within the past year and a half, I find it odd that that's when he lost this supposed 500 grand because the past year and a half, you were going back and forth with the network to get on the show in the first place. So what convenient timing that you're all of a sudden broke and can use that as an excuse to go back on the promises that you made this escort in Columbia. If it was just me that I had to worry about, I would be a lot better off. But because wow. I have Madeleine, I'm paying for an apartment down there, I'm paying for her car, food, as well as all my expenses here. Not to mention, you know what an even worse look is for Luke, is when you take into account the way that this girl acts, she acts very immaturely, which given her age of 19, you would think that she was a 12 year old, the thing she says and the way she acts. But you know what? I think that her innocence and her childhood was robbed from her. Because if you're working as an escort on the mean streets of Medellin, Colombia, you experience a lot of trials and tribulations, I would assume that would shock anybody, would, you know, with anybody's head. Hey babe, do you wanna go on the show with me? You won't have to work again. Okay, yeah, you agree to go on the show, but fast forward, what's happening? You're gonna have her take the fall. I'm not happy with the amount of money that I have sent, but I love her. I'm a people pleaser and I want my partner above all else to be happy. I'm a people pleaser and I just want everyone around me to be happy. I want it to be all sunshine and rainbows. Luke, please buddy, right now what you're doing is you're pulling a mic. We've already seen this formula before. Brain blast, it's like we're all seeing the same pattern. Anyway, let's take a look at this Reddit thread together as a family. Constant Connection 46 commented, the girl from Colombia in the new season is an escort. I have lived in Medellin for three years now. The girl from Medellin, Madeline, has been an escort for gringos for at least the past two years. It's crazy at first I didn't recognize her because she's had a lot of work done. Well, I wonder who paid for that, Luke? Is that also her fault? My life is amazing. I have my boobies done, I have my dog, I have my money. But the one thing I need is Luke. I really need Luke move here as soon as possible. Now let's see what the comments have to say about this. First, we got Mini Wonton commenting. Seems pretty obvious, not gonna lie. Black Leader 70 commented, yeah, and the aunt seems like her madam too. Sparkle Puppy 6 commented, someone exposed this in a Medellin Tourism Facebook group, but the post got deleted. Luke was in the comments defending himself. Lots of people were commenting, confirming the same. It's sad because she's so young. Best reply ever responded, yeah, if she started under 18, then it's quite possible she was trafficked as well, or at least under unsavory influence that she was not mature enough to fully consent to. Reminds me of that very young gal, Men don't control me who married the guy with two kids. Then we got former life 4284 commenting, Luke is a total passport bro, just travels to locations with young hot women and flex his mom's money for some play. Columbia is passport bro stop number one. Why do you think so many wannabe dudes from 90 Day Fiance get women from there? A little money goes a long way and an ugly American with money is sometimes a good prospect. The one thing I need is Luke. I really need Look, move here as soon as possible. I just want to be close of him and be happy together. It's currently June 30th at the time that I'm recording this video and I just looked on Instagram, Mike is married to a new woman, congratulations to him. But when he was in the relationship with Jimena, my favorite part of their entire segment was at the end when the narrative completely flip-flopped. Because Mike, similarly to Luke, presented himself as this sad, simpy dude that has spent all his money to possess this woman in Colombia. What happened though? 
At the end, there's a conversation where he says, are you gonna go back to working on those adult video sites? And when this happened, the entire audience was shocked because we all found out for the first time that Jimena was a cam girl, and then Mike approached her as a customer and said, you don't have to do this anymore. I'm gonna pretend to be a big baller and pay all your bills. Your bills is paid, right? When Mike said that to Jimena and expressed his disgust at her former job, she responded, what's wrong with that? You met me when I was doing that, which is such a gangster response because here's the thing, when I'm talking about survival, this is what I'm talking about. Because a lot of these women have had all kinds of guys in their life promise them the entire world. Who's delivered? Nobody. Obviously, otherwise they wouldn't be on the TV show, right? They've had all these guys come in and out and say, oh, I wanna financially put you on, oh, I wanna do this, I wanna do that. And then what happens? they sweep the rug out from under them. She does not know about the job situation? You haven't told her? Mm-mm. So the backbone of the relationship is what? My love for her. Oh my goodness. My wet socks, let me know in the comments what you think about Luke and Madeline's dog water relationship. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'm excited to see y'all in the next one. If you got some spare change, please check out our Your Wet Sock channel membership program for the custom emojis, the exclusive content, all ad-free videos, 10 out of 10, totally worth.